welcome to my first video of 2024. This is my 600 kilometer, 8,000 meter challenge that I went to do with the Ohio Randomiers in September uh, of this year. Yeah, it was called Into the Wilds. I um, didn't immediately understand what Into the Wilds means, um, but I'll tell you about that in just a little while. This is a challenge that I had to try to complete to be able to qualify for the R10,000 award. And I'll tell you more about that, hopefully in a, another video in the near future. Essentially, we had to ride a distance of 600 kilometers and climb an elevation of at least 8,000 meters. You know, when you try to do it in Ohio, there's super difficult terrain and there's super difficult environmental conditions. Yeah, it can be quite something else. This course has a very specific design in that it's an out and back course uh, in a clover leaf design. So that means we started in Zanesville went out northeast for the first um, two-thirds of the ride and then back to the hotel and had an overnight check and stay and then the last one-third of the ride down south to complete the 600 kilometers. The benefit having this kind of design is that it gives you a central point where you can leave all your stuff, your, your clothing, your gear, you can leave all your spares and equipment. You don't have to carry as much as you normally would have to because then you carry much less weight on this super difficult course and the second thing is that psychologically it also breaks the ride up into two manageable parts in that you do uh, two thirds on the first day and one third on the second day most people will have a sleep on this ride except for one specific rider who i'll tell you about a little bit later who didn't sleep at all so everybody at this point should have a brevet card. There is also an EPP option. The only thing I'm asking is tomorrow at the turnaround, we will be in a post office. Send the postcard even if you're using EPP. If they're going to my kids, they'll think they're awesome. Uh, Susan will be in my truck at both turnarounds uh, today and tomorrow. We may see her at other controls, but you are guaranteed to see her at the turnaround. And the truck is loaded up with water, some beverages, snacks. Other than that, it's a beautiful route. Um, really, really fucking hard. It's really, really fucking hard. I don't know why we're here, but it's gonna be a type two fun sort of today. It's a, everything you love and hate about this route, this is the gentleman who uh, created it. We started off as 13 riders attempting this event. There were two of us from Canada, that is Edwin and myself and the others were from various states across the US. You know, I had just arrived the night before and I didn't have much time to assemble my bicycle. I made a mistake with the uh, electrical connections and so my lights weren't working when I checked them on the start line. I, they were working before that, but I think being out in the cooler weather, the tape that I used to, just to strap up my, my cables must have contracted. And so with that, as it contracted, it pulled the uh, the cable connections out and so they didn't quite um, connect and so I had to first sort that out before I could actually start the ride and uh, as a result I was playing catch up for the entire event after that and so the first group of riders that I caught up with was uh, Jay he lives in Chicago and uh, Lydia from Indiana Frank from uh, Ohio oh, it's Regan. Oh, it's Regan. Hey, yes. <laughs> Good morning to you all. Hi. Hi. I'm Canada. Canada, that's right. Uh, and it was actually Jay who actually gave me insight as to why it's called Into the Wilds. Now, apparently this part of Ohio uh, had a huge coal mine and the coal mine is what they call a strip mine, which means that they take layers of earth off to be able to expose the, the coal vein or that they were actually trying to mine. And so they had uh, you know, systematically remove layers and layers of the earth and cause quite a bit of um, damage to the surface of the earth. And then this was all rehabilitated with time. They introduced uh, wildlife to this area. That area of, of Ohio is called the Wilds. And so that's where the name of the ride comes through is that we ride through that area and that's why it's called Into the Wilds. So that was some information that I learned from Jay, which I didn't know about before I started the event. The next person that I caught up with was uh, this young man, Hart. He's a, originally from Ohio itself, and so he's just recently started randomeering, and this is his first 600 kilometer event. Morning. Hello. Hey, how you doing? Good. Awesome. Good, thanks. Which is a huge 
achievement to be able to do this kind of event. Uh, not only is this a 600, but it's a 600 with 8,000 meters of elevation gain, so it's super difficult. I rode with heart until we came across um, this rider, Jeff, who you have met in a previous video, and Jeff has, in this situation, he unfortunately had a double puncture. Both he and Hart had a double puncture. So if you look at this particular image, you'll see that uh, there was a steep descent that we had to go down and then a really steep ascent after that. But it was on that steep descent that there was a, a trench uh, in the road. It was um, at least about two feet long and about uh, probably about two or three inches deep. So it was super deep and, uh, and wide, at least a uh, car tire width wide or even a little bit bigger than that. And if you went into that, there's no way you're going to get through it without some kind of damage, either breaking a rim, breaking a frame, having punctures, rupturing tires. So they were just super fortunate to be able to just get uh, through that just with a, a double puncture. But we spent about half an hour trying to get those wheels reinflated and back on the road again, losing valuable time. Both riders had difficulty getting their tires inflated up to optimal pressures, and so they hard phoned um, uh, Susan and asked her to meet us at the next checkpoint. Uh, the first checkpoint was in Cambridge and so yeah so Susan agreed to do that and she had a pump with her and was able to help us to um, help them to get their bikes reinflated and back up to uh, opt optimal operation. So where was this uh, pothole? It was on that downhill. On this one here? Yeah. I stopped in that driveway down there and then I saw you guys stopped up here. I was doing probably 30. Wow. What's that? I was doing probably 30 when I hit it. Yeah. And we had a Jeff and Hart both had double punctures hitting a pothole uh, on the way down that hill. And yeah, it's taken a little bit of time to get those uh, punctures fixed. It's, it is a beautiful place to ride. Just stunning. Uh, we left um, the control, the, the start at five this morning, and it's now seven, so it's about two hours riding. But I think we spent almost at least half an hour at uh, fixing those tubes. Anyway, let's get to the checkpoint. I'll talk to you again soon. Um, yeah, so the Ohio. This part of Ohio is extremely beautiful, especially this time of the year with all the fall colors. Now, I understand this is an early fall because they've got like really uh, severe drought. So yeah, it, it looks like it was really quite a bad drought that they had, but beautiful, absolutely beautiful. With lots of undulating hills and just the most amazing roads and uh, the scenery was just spectacular. us coming into uh, Cambridge which is the first checkpoint and the checkpoint was at the Sheets. Now Susan was the uh, event uh, marshal and organizer and uh, official for this ride because Joshua who's the RBA for Ohio was actually taking part so he had asked Susan to uh, officiate and to support the ride while he was actually um, doing the event itself and um, Susan you know met us at multiple checkpoints on both days of the ride providing us with um, with uh, support uh, emotional support but also nutrition uh, food drinks uh, mechanical support and yes yeah, she actually gave uh, Jeff and Hart spare tires and tubes just you know to make sure that they didn't run into any uh, technical difficulties later on in the ride because with a double flat you know you use most of your spares and so yes yeah, she was just amazing to be able to provide them with everything else once we were up and running again and back up to speed we set off uh, further northeast and yeah as i say this scenery was just absolutely spectacular and so this is a scene of us riding through some of the farmlands with the beautiful barns and uh, winding roads and rolling hills just absolutely spectacular so it's about 100 kilometers into the ride at about 1,460 
67 meters so uh, yeah not too bad so that's one sixth of the ride done uh, yeah it's a very lumpy it's up and down all the way it's lots of short sharp steep climbs uh, lost a little bit of time trying to make up some time now so anyway just gonna try and see how long I can try and keep this pace up okay it's getting warm gonna need to get some food and drinks pretty soon but you know as the, the ride continued it just started to get hotter and hotter and hotter I think it was like 30 plus degrees on the road and uh, you can see I have a big merino uh, randoneering Canada jersey and um, that together with uh, a, fat, a really good uh, substantial layer of fat over my body really helped to increase my internal body temperature and so I started to overheat pretty quickly. I eventually caught up with my fellow uh, randonneur from Canada, Edwin, and uh, here we are riding just uh, leaving the second checkpoint. We left together and Edwin is much fitter and stronger and faster than myself. So, you know, I just try to keep my own steady pace and I just let him ride up the hills ahead of me and, um, you know, disappear into the distance. We, there was just some amazing scenery that we actually went through. It was just great to actually uh, share that with somebody. As the ride continued, the heat of the day just became super intense and I really started to struggle with the heat. And eventually, you know, I think my internal body temperature must have been way too high because I eventually had to stop riding. I just sat on the side of the road. So I'm at 169 kilometers and I am exhausted. We already did more than 2,700 meters of climbing. But once again, it's the heat. Oh, the heat is just incredible. Oh. I don't know, this heat is just too much. I'm just going to take a little break. Just, just rest, just um, cool down. I've got another 20 k's to go to the uh, checkpoint, um, the turnaround point, and then it's back to the um, hotel. But hopefully it'll be cooler. So um, yeah, but it's just super, super hot. Totally, totally exhausted. Uh, I think I had heat exhaustion. So I think the difference between heat exhaustion and heat stroke is that Heat exhaustion just means that you can't continue or you have severe difficulty continuing with your exercise activity in the heat because of the high internal body temperature. Whereas heat stroke, I think, means that you get some kind of neurological injury like a convulsion or stroke or uh, some kind of seizure. At the checkpoint, Susan, I think, saw immediately my predicament and saw that I was really in a bad way. And she immediately helped me by helping me to cool down uh, gave me lots of cold drinks, lots of glucose, lots of carbohydrates, meals, uh, fed me and made sure that I could actually lie down and rest my head on a nice uh, pack up for almost 28 minutes. But at the end of that, I felt so much better and cooled down substantially and I could actually continue. Right. Susan, of course, had much more energy and she took photographs of Stephen, Jeff and Jeff. Um, Stephen is from Pennsylvania, Jeff is from Pennsylvania and the other Jeff is from Ohio. I know Frank, who's uh, from Ohio, Dan Driscoll, who's from Texas, he's the famous guy in all the magazines, and of course Edward. And then here's a picture of Jeff, Sarah, Jonathan, and uh, Joshua. Uh, yeah, all super fast, strong riders. That's a picture of me in my usual position of uh, being super on the ground, completely just trying to recover from the heat and the exertion of the ride. So, I'm finally on my return leg to the hotel for the first, uh, uh, second 200 of the day and uh, it's been brutally hard, the climbs, just endless, 
steep and just endless scenery is just amazing though as usual just beautiful all these autumn colors stunning but it was the heat that killed me wow super super hot hot i just i just couldn't cope so i eventually passed out when i got to the checkpoint and dear susan gave me lots of ice to recover from cold fluids and ate and I just slept about half an hour. Fortunately it started to cool down and as it cooled down you know it got a lot easier for me to ride and so I started to pick up my pace and eventually take a step. So we come into the end of the first day. It's, uh, it's been a really hot day. which is the town, the town that I showed you earlier where Susan gave us some support. I caught up with my fellow randomers. It was much cooler by that time and I was able to uh, do a quick little change and get back onto the road as quickly as possible. Okay, so that's the sheets. That's our checkpoint. Final checkpoint for tonight. And after this, it's to the hotel. So, oh, just hoping I can get there and get a bit of a sleep tonight. So this is Cambridge. Uh, it's called Cambridge, Uganzi, I'm not sure. I think it's got two names. Anyway. And then from there, it was just trying to get back to the hotel again. I had a really close call with two deer on the road. I saw the first one run across the, the road in front of me. I braked, slowed down, and I was lucky I did that because the second one just came in just after that and almost took me out. It's like super grateful not to have any kind of accident with the second deer. And I got back to the hotel just after three o'clock in the morning. Just a short note, just to say, I finally got you. Didn't think I was gonna get you. It was like bloody impossible to crush this bloody thing. But anyway, I am here. I'm gonna make the most of it. Gonna eat, go to the toilet, have a shower and sleep. Uh, a long day in the saddle, so almost 20, just more than 22 hours of riding. Uh, and yeah, managed to have a quick sleep. Got to bed by about four and got up at, at 5.30, so 90 hours of sleep. Had a quick breakfast by 6.30. Uh, back on the road again. Just after, it's probably about seven o'clock in the morning, and just got started leaving uh, Zainzul. Had a, some coffee, two cups of coffee, and some orange juice. I couldn't eat. Oh, I did have some mashed potatoes. Such a beautiful place. Just have a look at that dawn. Just amazing. All the mist on the water. Just... Well, we are leaving uh, Zanesville. We had gone up northeast initially, and now we are going uh, south uh, from Zanesville. And once again, the scenery along the route was just absolutely spectacular, just beautiful. I set up early, and I know the fast riders had more time to rest, so they had a longer sleep in. And I totally anticipated that they would come speeding past me, you know, just you know, catch me, chew me up and spit me out. That's in the, that's exactly what they did. So on some of the steep climbs, it was very sh soon that they actually caught up and uh, did that to me. But about this time, uh, Susan had told me at the, the hotel in Zanesville that Lydia, who we had met earlier on, she just checked into the hotel earlier that morning and left immediately with no sleep at all. She was on a mission to finish this. I knew she was out on the road somewhere and so I just could continue with my ride and eventually 
you know, slowly, slowly, I managed to catch up with Lydia. So she's originally from Indiana at the University of Purdue. She was uh, trying to achieve the R10,000 award as well. And by completing this ride, she was going to be the eighth rider, eighth female rider in the US to actually do that. And the first from a non-coastal state to actually get a you know, R10,000 award. And as the day continued, it just, continue to get hotter and hotter. After yet another brutal climb, I decided it's time to ditch the old PVP jacket. So I just tossed it on the side of the road together with my arm warmers. Free at last! Free at last! Oh, might need it again later on. So, fortunately this is an out and back, out and back course. And so, if it's not, hasn't been taken away, by road maintenance. I'll pick it up on the way back. I took a photograph of the signpost just to remind me exactly where it is. This, I think it's 54 k's to go to uh, back to the hotel. So round about there, that's where I'll pick it up. Yeah, we'll be coming into one of the checkpoints on the way down to the turnaround point. Uh, and I think we all had some ice cream and some cold drinks and just try to cool down. The rides were, the hills on the southern leg of the ride were just super difficult. They were like super strong, super steep and difficult. But once again, the scenery was absolutely spectacular. This is a, a video of us crossing over the, uh, I think it's called Musking Gum River. Uh, from Ohio into West Virginia. So just, just like a little detour into West Virginia and then immediately back into Ohio, across the Ohio River. And I thought the, these flags just look spectacular along the route, just looked absolutely beautiful. So I just love this whole scene. Uh, all the towns along here look so old and historical, just absolutely beautiful. The turnaround point was, um, I think it was something with they call the islands, surprisingly flat. And the checkpoint was right at the end of one of these uh, islands. Uh, there was a post office there where Joshua had asked us to post a, a postcard to him with our time and date and name so that he knew that we had reached that specific point. And this is me trying to explain exactly the mental uh, gymnastics and uh, mathematics that I have gotten wrong uh, in my calculation. So this is the turnaround point on day two, the final turnaround point. And from here, it's just back to the hotel. As usual, when I'm tired, I make mistakes. I miscalculate everything. I thought I have to be back at the hotel by eight o'clock. And it's now 12.30. So I was like, ah, oh, there's no way I can make it in seven and a half hours. There's no way, because if we, we left at 6.30 and now it's 12.30, it's six hours, but I need an extra hour going back. So I didn't think I'm gonna make it. So, but Josh has given me the best news ever. The best news is that there's an extra hour. <laughs> I need to be there at nine o'clock. So, okay, just hear it from the man himself. He's the RBA, so. Howdy. Yeah. So Josh, you said, we have to only be there at 9 o'clock. Yes, because we start at 5 a.m., not 4 a.m. Right. So. See there. That's the best news ever. You Thank you. Not to think negative thoughts, how easy it is to actually talk yourself out of a ride. Joshua fortunately helped me to correct my mistakes. And uh, immediately, as soon as I realized that mathematically it was possible that I could actually finish the ride, you know, I immediately had more energy and I was able to continue with the ride. We're down to crunch time again. Yet again, I've got 40 k's, four hours, shucks. Problem is, sometimes just one hill can take like 25 minutes. So there's no chance, it's not guaranteed. It's so close, oh man. I just continued at a slow pace and steady pace and yeah, and eventually almost completely made it back to the hotel. Um, well, 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 can you believe it? I finally made it back here. Oh my goodness, I can't believe it. I thought I'd see this place again. 
and so that's my first wish came true second wish wanted to cool down and uh, yeah we have a nice evening rain for the last little bit was a bit overcast and that was just perfect after cooling it down well i'm super happy i'm excited to have finished I don't think I'll be doing one of these again for a while. Just and of course, that. at the hotel, I was able to see all the riders that had come in earlier than me. Though most of them had all been showered and cleaned, and they looked all super uh, beautiful. And of course, you know, uh, sitting around there being all sticky and smelly. And then, of course, we had uh, Lydia coming in, and Lydia finished with uh, 28 minutes to spare. She had conquered this uh, 600 kilometer ride. And that's with Leo, with her husband. Yeah, and she did extremely well to be able to, to um, complete this uh, super challenging event. So congratulations to her. You even already took a shower. 28 minutes to spare. <laughs> Your husband wanted me to go to the top of the well done my friend well done how you doing Oh. Is the is the ring? Suddenly the ring let the let the road wet, and then I cannot go fast on down here. What did what did it make? The ring, suddenly heavy ring and gusty. Oh. On the little chair wheel on the top there. Yes, yes. And then all the road That's is That's it wet. for me. Uh, I hope you've enjoyed watching this video. As I say. It's been a really busy year and uh, there were so many different rides that uh, I had to do this year and so many other randoneering obligations that I've taken on uh, that I haven't had the time to produce any videos. I'm hoping to pr produce a few more, uh, just summarizing some of the amazing events that I've participated in this year. Hope to get them out to you um, sometime later in uh, December and January. Um, and then set the uh, stage to uh, tackle some of the challenges that we have for 2025. Uh, yeah, once again, uh, if you've enjoyed this video, please remember to press that like button. And uh, if you'd like to support this channel, please subscribe to this um, uh, channel. Please press that subscribe button. And until uh, I see all of you again, uh, please ride safely. Okay, speak to you again soon. Okay, bye.